So for this, we're asked to identify which of the following is the shear force diagram for the beam. So in order to do this, I'm going to give it a go and actually try and attempt to draw the shear force diagram, and then we'll have a look and see it one, which one it looks most like um, of the four options. So in order to draw a shear force diagram, the first thing you need to do is draw the uh, free body diagram of your system. So if I draw that, we can carry across straight away the external forces. So that's the distributed load and the big point load here. And we've also got this moment that's applied on the end. So now we need to replace our supports with the equivalent reactions. So at A here we have a roller support, which means it just has the one reaction, which is perpendicular to the surface. So in this case it's going to be a vertical force. And then at C we have a pin joint, and we know a pin has a horizontal and a vertical force. So that's going to be our free body diagram. Alright, so now we want to go ahead and try and draw what the shear force diagram should generally look like. So remember for shear force diagrams, you're only interested in the forces. Okay, so this moment that's drawn here is not going to impact the shear force diagram whatsoever. It's as if it's not even there. So for the shear force diagram, the other thing you need to remember is that you follow the forces. Okay, so the first one, we see that we have this upward force drawn. All right, so it's going to go up. And I should have mentioned the reason that I've drawn these up is because the applied forces are going down, so they should counteract it um, by going upwards. All right, so through this section here, we have no forces happening, so our shear force diagram should remain flat. We then come across this big um, point force. All right, that's that one there. So that's going to push us downwards. I'm going to guess a random distance that it goes. We've then got this distributed force, which is going to push us downwards as well, except it's kind of like a gradual pushing. So we know that they end up being like a diagonal line on the shear force diagram for a uniformly distributed load. So finally, at the end, we've got this horizontal force, and that's going to push us back up. And I should have probably mentioned as well, this horizontal force that we have here, it's probably just going to be zero because we only have vertical forces applied onto our beam. Anyway, so that's our shear force diagram drawn from this um, free body diagram. So now we want to try and compare it to what we see down here. So if we look at A, all right, it kind of follows the same shape as what we've got. It goes up, all right, which is what we've got here from the support reaction stays flat through this first bit where nothing's happening. It then drops where we hit that point load. And then we've got the uniformly distributed load having its um, diagonal influence here. And then it's pushed back up at the end from this um, support force at the end. So this one looks pretty good. Let's just double check that none of the others uh, look good as well. So for this one at C here, um, you can see that it doesn't have the uh, force at the beginning pushing it up from the support. So that's pretty bad. This one here at B, same thing. We don't have a force at the beginning pushing it upwards um, from the fact that we have the support here. So that's dodgy. And then at D, ah, same thing again. We don't have a force at the beginning here pushing it up off the axis. So that one's out as well. So that means that the answer to this question is A. And just to note that this question continues in the next video um, when it asks about the bending moment diagram for it.